Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about Spencer Lee and why he's so dominant on top. He's probably the most prolific scorer on top in college wrestling today, and he has a system that can be broken down into three basic parts. But within those three basic parts, he has a lot of great detail that he's using to turn people. So let's take a look. First part of his series is to collapse the opponent's arm. He wants his opponent's arm next to their body. And to do that, the first move he uses is a chop. Before we look at Spencer Lee's chop, let's look at a traditional chop. Uh, here's Kale Sanderson versus John Trench in the NCAA Finals. And you can see that Kale uses just a basic, traditional, uh, slightly above the elbow or at the elbow chop. And uh, Trench defends going down to an elbow. Now let's look at what Spencer Lee's doing. When Lee chops, he chops at the elbow and slides down to the forearm. You can see that here against Tomasello. Against Rivera, he collapses that arm. The other thing he's doing is that he's not trying to chop and catch the opponent's wrist with his right hand. He's chopping and catching with the same hand. The chop doesn't always work. This is D1 wrestling, and it's hard to chop a guy over his arm. When it doesn't work, he goes to the head lever. Now with the head lever, there's two different ways he does this. Uh, the first way is if there's not a lot of weight on the arm, like there isn't in this case. He's able just to grab by the wrist, use his head as a fulcrum, and pull the wrist back. Same here, there's not a lot of weight on the arm, and pull the arm straight back. Here against Pat Glory, Glory tries to keep his arm stiff, but he doesn't put any weight on it. So as a result, he's able to pull it straight back. Now sometimes guys will defend by putting weight on their arm. You can see that here with Jack Mueller. This is the best way to defend the head lever, but Lee actually has a good solution for it. He's not even trying to pull the lower part of the arm. If you watch Mueller's wrist here, his hand really doesn't move on the mat at all. What happens is Spencer Lee's using his head to drive the upper part of Mueller's arm over the lower part and collapse the arm that way. That's what happens every time someone puts weight on their arm. That's what he goes for. He no longer tries to pull the wrist back. He drives the upper part of the arm over the lower part of the arm. This is an interesting one. Cullen keeps his arm out. Uh, Lee is not able to get that head lever he tries here, so he fights for wrist control uh, underneath. And then as he's doing that, uh, Colin tries to build up. And right here, you can notice that he has weight on that arm. And uh, once he's pushing up off the mat and has weight on it, Spencer Lee traps that wrist, drives the upper part of the arm over the lower part of the arm. If he can't get the head lever right away, he has a cool push-pull trick that he uses. And a lot of times, guys will keep their wrist very far out. And uh, Lee's not able to get that head lever on them at first. He's got a really nice subtlety that he uses. So here, Kuhn is just keeping his wrist out. He can't get a bite on that arm. He tries. He's not able to get the angle. Uh, so what he does is he keeps his arm out there. He actually goes with it. He pushes on the back of his tricep, breaking Kuhn down. When he tries to build back up, gives him an opportunity to get that arm and pulls it back. See how far Kuhn's wrist is? He can't reach that. He can't get a bite on the arm, like I said. He pushes that elbow and flattens him out to his belly. There's only one of two things he can do here. He can either stay down there and get a stall call, which comes pretty quick in D1, or he can try to build back up, is what he does. He tries to build back up, and there it is again. There's pressure on that hand, exactly what Lee's waiting for. He gets the bite right above the wrist. He still has to keep coming up. He's still flat. And as soon as he starts to build... He's able to drive that forward. Now, I've seen some kids and uh, some guys in, in college use this. Not a lot, but uh, I see sometimes where they'll push on that uh, arm on the tricep. It doesn't seem to be as effective, though, because they're missing a big part of this. Every single time that Lee does this, whenever you see him pushing the tricep to flatten someone out, he's always blocking their knee. The reason for that is because he needs to stretch them out, right? That's the whole point of the move. So as he does this, he blocks the knee. And that's what gets him flat to the belly. If he just pushed the arm, the guy's going to shift his weight back to his knee. It doesn't work. So watch as he does it with some other guys. Same thing against Moisey. 
against Tomasello, you can see it really good. He pushes it here, flattens it out completely. Look at the left knee blocking his knee. And then once he puts weight on the arm, driving him over it. Here it is again in slow motion. Looking for wrist control. He can't get it. Thomas Hill is keeping his wrist very far out. So he blocks that knee, pushes the tricep forward, and flattens him out. As soon as Thomas Hill puts weight on that arm, trying to build back up. Again, once he has weight on the arm, he traps the wrist, uses his head to drive the top part of the arm forward, and collapses it that way. So the first part of Lee's three-stage series is to collapse the opponent's arm next to their body. He does this using the chop, the head lever, and if the head lever doesn't work, he uses that push-pull move to break the opponent down, force them to put weight on their arm, and then goes back to the head lever. The next step in the series is the most important step, getting the bar. In the beginning of the video, I said that Spencer Lee has a lot of detail that he uses on top in order to be so dominant. His arm bar is a great example of that. It has some characteristics that make it much more effective than a traditional arm bar. Let's check it out. Once the arm has been collapsed, it's relatively easy to get the bar. Uh, he does this by lifting the opponent's wrist off the mat and then jamming his arm into the space that's been created. He can almost always beat their arm that way. Here it is again. Lifts Mueller's wrist off the mat, creates that space, and then jams the bar in. To use a bar like Spencer Lee, it should have three main attributes. It should be shallow, it should be parallel with the opponent's body, and the opponent's elbow should be exposed. Let's take a look at all three. This clip really allows us to see what's going on with Spencer Lee's bar. You can see all three attributes I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, first, you'll notice that the bar is very shallow. It's not elbow deep like it would be uh, typically with a traditional bar. Uh, his hand is just past the opponent's arm. Also, rather than being perpendicular across the back, it's very vertical, it's very parallel with the opponent's body. He keeps his hand almost up near the opponent's rear delt. And thirdly, he lets his opponent's elbow pop. He's not covering the elbow with his arm like you would see with most bars. Because Spencer Lee's bar is so vertical and parallel with the opponent's body rather than going across the back, uh, it's very much like a chicken wing. Uh, in fact, in high school, a lot of the refs would stop this. In NCAA, they uh, let it go. Uh, but one nice detail that he adds, if you notice his fingers, his fingers are always pointing across the opponent's back. He bends his hands, so that's the direction his fingers are pointing. If his fingers were pointing straight up and down, if he kept his arms straight, even the refs in NCAA would stop it. But by pointing your fingers across your opponent's back, you make it look a little bit less like a chicken wing than it actually is. Let's take a look at a more traditional bar. In this case, Logan Stieber, who has a really great uh, top series, great bar half series. Here he's using a more traditional bar straight across the back. I want you to pay attention to the opponent's right wrist and right hand. And look at the range of motion they have in that hand. A traditional bar that goes straight across the back allows that hand to move forward and back and away from the body. Let's compare that to Spencer Lee's bar to see why Lee's bar is so effective. Lee doesn't actually run a bar series. He runs a cross wrist series. The way he puts the bar in helps to immobilize his opponent's left arm. I want you to notice the opponent's left wrist. Compared to the bar we showed earlier, look at how immobile that wrist is. The opponent can't pull it away from his side, and as a result, Lee can take his time on top to get that cross wrist. That brings us to the third and final stage of the series, catching the cross wrist. He does that initially by dipping far to the right side. Because Lee has immobilized his opponent's left arm and really trapped it next to his side, he doesn't have to rush getting the cross wrist. He takes his time on top once he has the bar locked up. Uh, and you can see here, he really goes far to the right. Look at how far he's able to cheat to the right side because his opponent's left arm is immobile. That's the big advantage that this bar allows. If he's not able to catch that wrist initially, he has a cool little trick he uses by starting at the chest. Take a look at what Lee does here. His so opponent right hips down. He doesn't have any space to get through to catch that cross wrist. His opponent, again, has to build. As he posts his right arm, it clears a space. Lee uses that space 
and works his arm in there and then slides it down to the waist in order to catch that cross wrist. He does the same thing here. His opponent right hips down and he's having a hard time getting the cross wrist there. So he goes up by the chest, slides it down to the wrist. There's another big advantage that Lee's bar has. At the higher levels, it's very hard to keep a cross wrist once you get it. Uh, here we see Ethan Lezak versus Nick Piccinini. Uh, Piccinini's a beast on top. Uh, he's going for wrist control here. Once he catches that cross wrist, it's cleared almost immediately. It's very difficult at D1 level to keep a cross wrist for long. Compare that to the rebar. Once you have the bar and the cross wrist control, it's extremely difficult to clear your wrist. Um, this gives Spencer Lee a big advantage and again allows him to take time on top in order to set up his turns. So that's Lee's three-part series. Let's take a look at him putting it together in real time. Here is against Pat Glory. Uh, Glory's got his wrist far out. Uh, he uses the head lever, driving the upper part of the arm over the lower part. Gets the shallow bar with the elbow exposed. Dips far to the right and really takes his time in catching that cross wrist. Uh, once he has it and the rebar secure, he goes right into his tilt. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on his tilts. Uh, once you have a reinforced bar, you know, the arm bar with the cross wrist control, you should be able to tilt your opponent every time. The real secret with Spencer Lee is how he's able to get that rebar so consistently. So once you have that down, uh, the rest is relatively easy, but we'll take a look at some of his tilts and I'll give you some details on what he's doing there as well. By far, his favorite tilt is the rebar tilt. Uh, you can see here, um, he almost always takes it to the right side away from the bar, uh, using that bar to pry his opponent over. Uh, one detail he uses is he many times goes really deep with his right foot and pushes off that foot, uh, pulling the opponent onto his chest, going into a high bridge. Um, he does that fairly often. Again, he falls off to the right very hard, using that bar to pull them over. Uh, and if they do end up on top of him, kind of parallel, he'll go into a high bridge. Otherwise, he stays like he is there. Here's a rare example of him actually rolling towards the bar. Uh, he rarely does this, but you know, it's still an option. His next favorite tilt is uh, what we call the Easton tilt. It's a cross wrist roll through tilt. Uh, he typically uses this when he's not able to sink the bar completely, but he still is able to get cross wrist control. Uh, and you can see here, he's very good with that tilt as well. Uh, he uses the rebar tilt probably 70% of the time, he uses this probably 20, 25% of the time. Here's an example of him taking the east and tilt the opposite way. He can go both ways with it, either roll into it or pull the opponent back. Lastly is when he chooses to run the bar. I said earlier he doesn't run the bar too often and he doesn't, but when he does, it's nasty. Because his bar is parallel to the body, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty dangerous. It looks painful. Uh, you're not gonna be able to get away with this in high school. Uh, it even gets stopped at the collegiate level a lot of times, uh, but you can see when he does it, it's pretty effective. Uh, but because it's straight up and down, it really puts a lot of pressure on the opponent's shoulder. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a better understanding of what Spencer Lee's doing on top to be so dominant. Hopefully, you were able to pick up some tricks and techniques to add to your own game as well. Be sure to check back often as we'll be adding videos soon. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are posted.